Morning folks, it is Wednesday morning and 3rd of June and um, we're going to just read God's word again together this morning. We are on Acts chapter 24 this morning. So let's read this. Five days later, Ananias, the high priest, arrived with some of the Jewish leaders and the lawyer, Tertullius, to present their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul was called in, Tertullius presented the charges against Paul in the following address to the governor. You have provided a long period of peace for us Jews and with foresight have enacted reforms for us. For all of this, Your Excellency, we are very grateful to you. But I don't want to bore you, so please give your attention for only a moment. We have found this man to be a troublemaker who is constantly stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of the cult known as the Nazarenes. Furthermore, he was trying to desecrate the temple when we arrested him. You can find out the truth for, uh, of our accusa accusations by examining him, him yourself. Then the other Jews chimed in, declaring that everything Tertullius said was true. The governor then motioned for Paul to speak. Paul said, I know, sir, that you have been a judge of Jewish affairs for many years, so I gladly present my defence before you. You can quickly discover that I arrived in Jerusalem no more than 12 days ago to worship at the temple. My accusers never found me arguing with anyone in the temple, nor stirring up a riot in any synagogue or on the streets of the city. These men can't prove the things that they are accusing me of doing. But I admit that I follow the way which they call a cult. I worship the God of our ancestors and I firmly believe the Jewish law and everything written in the prophets. I have the same hope in God as these men that he will raise both the righteous and the unrighteous. Because of this I always try to maintain a clear conscience before God and all people. After several years away I returned to Jerusalem with money to aid my people and to offer sacrifices to God. My accusers saw me in the temple as I was completing a purification ceremony. There was no crowd around me and no rioting. But some Jews from the province of Asia were there, and they ought to be here to bring charges if they have anything against me. Ask these men what crime the Jewish High Council found me guilty of. Except of the one I shouted out, I am on trial before you today because I believe in the resurrection of the dead. At that point, Felix, who was quite familiar with the way, adjourned the hearing and said, Wait until Lysus, the garrison commander, arrives. Then I will decide the case. He ordered an officer to keep Paul in custody, but to give him some freedom and allow his friends to visit him and take care of his needs. A few days later, Felix came back with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. Sending for Paul, they listened as he told them about faith in Christ Jesus. As he reasoned with them about righteousness and self-control and the coming day of judgment, Felix became frightened. Go away for now, he replied. When it is more convenient, I'll call you again. He also hoped that Paul would bribe him so he, um, f so he sent him quite, for him quite often and talked with him. After two years went by in this way, Felix was su succeeded by Porcius Festus, and, be and because Felix wanted to gain favour with the Jewish people, he left Paul in prison. Amen. The end of Acts chapter 24. Paul was in prison for two years, with um, Felix coming backwards and forwards to him and talking to him uh, for that length of time. And Felix was frightened. Was he frightened because he realised what Paul was saying was true? Was he frightened because he was afraid of the judgement of God, which Paul talked about? We don't know. But he was trying to please people. But in all of this, Paul didn't try to please people. Paul simply gave an account of himself and of his actions, explaining why he followed God, why he believed. And that's something that we're all called to do. Um, in 1 Peter 3.15, we are told that we should always be ready to give an answer for what we believe and for why we live the way we live. And that's very true. That's what Paul was doing. 
He was answering why he lived the way he did, why he believed what he believed. People didn't want really to hear it. People didn't want really to accept it because it didn't fit into their reasoning. We need to understand that God's reasoning is not our reasoning. God's ways are not our ways. Uh, and that we need to accept that he knows better than us. That's a challenge and that's hard. But something that we need to accept. Let's think about that. Let's come and let's pray together. Um, let's remember uh, the ongoing work of the Standing Commission of the General Assembly this morning. Uh, they're looking after the business that General Assembly would normally be doing because we're not, it's not on this week. Let's just remember them that they would have wisdom in the decisions that they have to take this incoming week. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for the example that we see in your word day by day. Thank you for Paul, how he stood up for you, how he stood up for what he believed in, how he was prepared to give an answer when he was at, whenever he was asked questions, how he spoke boldly about you. Lord, if we could have just simply a portion of that boldness to speak whenever we're asked questions, we know it would be makes things so much different. Lord, make us bold, make us brave for you. Um, even in the face of opposition, may we speak out, may we be prepared to give an answer for what we believe and why. Father, we pray today for the Standing Commission of the General Assembly. Just ask that you be with them, give them wisdom. There are many decisions to be made uh, and it will be a, a long and arduous uh, job to do over Zoom. But Lord, just be with them and help them uh, that's, that they would lead us during this difficult time. And help us, Father, just to continue to reach out to others, to live the way you have co called us to live, to show that love which you show us to those who are around us. So, Father, thank you. And continue with us this day, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Pray that you would know God's peace and blessing today. Um, stay safe. It's a slightly different day outside. It's not quite as warm. It's not quite as sunny. Um, but again, it's a lovely day which God has given to us. And may you be blessed by it this day. So take care. See you again tomorrow morning. Bye.